Let's take a look now at some cutting tools for the mini lathe. This first set that I'm going to show you are made from high speed steel and these uh, are ground on an ordinary bench grinder. A six inch diameter wheel typically is used. Uh, eight inches fine or probably a little, even a little better if you happen to have one but the majority of them that you see are six inch diameter wheels and you can get them at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or Harbor Freight in the fifty sixty dollar range and they will do just fine for grinding your own tools. There is a section on my website uh, that will teach you the basics of it but one of the great things about grinding your own tools is you can put uh, special shapes on the tips for all sorts of purposes uh, that you cannot find commercial tools readily available to do. So this is a shape you can see it's carved out here and this is an example of what's called a form tool where the contour on the tool is uh, the opposite or the inverse of the, the uh, shape that I wanted on the edge of the workpiece. So that's an example. You can see these are machine or ground to different shapes for different purposes. This one here is a pointed tool and it's designed to reach down into a corner or a shoulder with that sharp tip and make a very uh, sharp edge on a shoulder. But these come in different uh, cross-sectional sizes. The largest here are 3 8 inch and that's the largest size that will fit on the mini lathe but uh, for industrial size lathes you can get these in much larger cross sections probably up to an inch or more as far as I know although the largest ones I've ever used are half inch uh, on my larger lathe but on the mini lathe uh, 3 8 is the largest you'll use because anything larger than that will be too will be above the center line of the lathe now these next size down are 5 16 inch cross section and uh, they serve the same purpose but because the uh, tool bit is a little bit smaller they can be ground more quickly and more easily on a typical shop grinder and so I often uh, prefer to use these smaller size tools rather than the 3 8 I do a lot of mine on 5 16 or these here are quarter inch and they work fine too and in fact I think uh, quarter inch is probably my favorite for the mini lathe and the main reason is that the blanks are inexpensive they're probably maybe two-thirds the price or even half the price of the larger blanks so you can buy lots of them and they probably cost uh, 60 70 cents a piece in uh, 2014 prices uh, but you can also even get smaller ones these are uh, 3 16 inch cross section all the way down to this little one here which is 1 8 inch now these tiny ones the 1 8 are too small to be practical for most purposes but they're handy if you do very very fine work which I often do and I've made this little uh, holder here they're so small you can't really clamp them in the tool holder very conveniently so I made this little adapter sleeve here to hold on to these and I don't use them very often but uh, when you want to do I think this is a tiny little boring tool if you need to bore a small hole uh, this is a way you can do that so that uh, gives you some example of uh, the types of tools you can grind and you can see they all have different shapes uh, and that's one of the big benefits of them is that you can make the tool to the shape that you want uh, and get tools that will do things that you can't do with an ordinary pre-made tool. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I like to use the uh, smaller size tools and I can do that conveniently because I made my own uh, quick change tool post or quick change tool holder and I've made some holders that are specifically designed for these uh, smaller cross-sectional tools because I, I like the way they work and I like the small tools for a lot of the small uh, fine work that I do and also I like the fact that they can be ground and uh, put into use quickly and more quickly and easily than the larger tools but this one uh, here is a boring tool and we'll talk a little bit about boring tools now and uh, I made a little boring holder to hold that. So uh, I'll talk about quick change tool posts and why they are a big advantage elsewhere in my videos. Uh, but that just gives you an example of some of the things you can do. Now one other choice for cutting tools are these. Uh, these are high speed steel quarter inch cross section tools and they are pre-sharpened for you into a variety of cutting shapes. This one here is a cutoff tool this is a boring tool, chamfering tool, uh, this is a turning tool 
And these two can be used for uh, facing or turning, depending on what you're trying to do. This one has a sharp edge for getting into corners, and this one has a slightly rounded edge for uh, finished turning or facing. But the, uh, what I like about these is they give you the fine quality finish that you get with high-speed steel tool, but they are already uh, pre-shaped. So if you don't have any experience grinding your own tools, this is already done for you. So this is a good set, in my opinion, when you're starting out to uh, be able to try out high-speed steel and see what kind of quality you get with it, see if it's something you like and want to stick with. But once you... Uh, have used these for a while, you can use them as guides to sharpen or shape your own tools that you can do from blanks. And the reason you would want to do that is this set costs about $32 for six tools, whereas you can buy the blanks uh, for less than a dollar a piece. So you could make your own set of six like this for around $6 or something in that ballpark, uh, 2014 prices. So uh, that's a good way to get started with high-speed steel tools, and you know you may find you just like them and uh, want to buy them. But uh, because they are not quite as hard as the carbide, they tend to wear over time, and you do have to sharpen them. But you can touch them up with a diamond hone. I use one like this. Uh, let's see if I can zoom out on that. But this is uh, called a. Uh, well, it used to have a name on the. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's called an Easy Lap Diamond Hone and Stone. And this is a medium grit, and I think I got this from Enco, ENCO, but you can get them. Uh, but I use this to touch up the edges when they become somewhat dulled. But if they get uh, real dull, then you got to touch them up on the grinder, and of course that requires a little bit more skill. But uh, they're good, and uh, try them out. They are um, Little Machine Shop number part number 2250, if you want to look those up on their website. Okay, next we'll look at what are called cemented carbide tools, and these consist of a uh, steel shank. These are uh, 3 8 inch cross section, and on that shank is brazed or cemented, as they call it, a small piece of silicon carbide, which is the actual cutting edge of the tool, and uh, that's where the name cemented carbide comes from. But the uh, actual cutting action all takes place here at the tip, and these uh, are good, the cemented carbide, or the carbide tip is very, very hard and uh, has good wear characteristics on so in industrial applications or in any kind of work where a lot of wear is involved. For example, maybe turning down cast iron uh, or a very hard material like stainless steel. They uh, don't wear as quickly as the high-speed steel, so they're, they're good for applications where a lot of wear is involved. The disadvantage to them is you can only get them in the shapes they come in, so that somewhat limits you for the types of jobs you can do. And they also don't generally give as good a finish, uh, particularly on aluminum and steel, as the high-speed steel tools do. So uh, they're good for certain applications, but I don't uh, use them for the majority of my work because of their shortcomings. These are the same things, but in a smaller quarter-inch shank size. Next we'll look at what are called indexable carbide cutting tools. And indexable refers to uh, the fact that these can be rotated around. You can see they're, the tip is triangular in shape and in fact has three cutting points on it. And when one of the uh, tips becomes dull or perhaps chipped, you can simply rotate it 120 degrees and bring a fresh cutting surface into play. And that rotation is uh, referred to as indexing. So that's where the name indexable carbide comes from. And uh, you can see they come with holders that are angled in various directions, straight or left or right, depending on uh, the direction you're cutting or some uh, angle on your workpiece that you need to reach in or around. But this last one here, uh, these tips typically are carbide or silicon carbide, and they're again like the uh, cemented carbide that we looked at. They're very hard they're somewhat brittle and they tend to chip if you uh, hit a discontinuity in the workpiece, for example an old screw hole that might be there from some former life that the workpiece had. Uh, but if you just drop them on the ways sometimes you can chip the tip of them. And you can see this one here, let me zoom in on that, get a better look at it. You can uh, may be able to see there that it uh, has a chip corner here down on the right that uh, I have rotated out and brought a fresh tip into play there. But uh, this uh, one here 
has an interesting tip or insert, which is actually a high-speed steel insert. And the advantage of those, as I said, high-speed steel gives you a better finish, and I like it, uh, the quality of the finish, better than you get with carbide. But these inserts fit into the indexable uh, tooling. And you can get these inserts from littlemachineshop.com. And this is what they look like uh, in the package or before they're mounted. Actually, these are the uh, carbide ones here, I think, or maybe one of them is the... You know, these are all carbide, but that's what they look like. I wanted to show you also some boring tools and other specialized tools, but these are used for boring holes that are larger, typically, than you can drill with a drill bit. And uh, an example of that would be uh, something like this, where you uh, have started a hole with a drill bit and then use this boring tool to bore it out to whatever internal diameter you want. So the uh, boring tool reaches down in here and uh, cuts along the inside edge like that. But these, as you can see, have a round shank and they come in different shank diameters. These happen to be uh, 3 8 inch diameter, which are a good size uh, for use on the mini lathe. But you can also get them in half inch diameter shanks for larger lathes and uh, there may be smaller ones, I'm not sure, but I would recommend the 3 8 inch diameter for the mini lathe. But you have to have some sort of special holder, and there are adapters uh, that you can put these into that, and then that make give them a uh, square cross section in the holder, which you can then clamp into the stock tool post. And there are also uh, specialized holders, for example, for quick change tool posts. I've got one over here. There's a uh, an example of one that's mounted in a quick change tool post that drops onto a dovetail slide, as you can see. Now, I've also made uh, some more specialized boring tools. These are ones I made in my shop on the lathe, and uh, these were made to bore down into a fairly deep hole, as you can see. But the, this one just uses a small round piece of high speed steel cutting material. And uh, it was experimental. I don't think it worked out very well because I didn't have it angled properly. But this one here uh, I made and it uses a uh, carbide insert tool, as you can see. And uh, here's another one I made that happens to have a high-speed steel insert in it. So that's uh, just some other possibilities for boring. And uh, let's take a look too at cutoff tools. A cutoff tool is a specialized tool that's like a thin blade and it plunges into the workpiece uh, at right angles like this and it has to be on the center line from a vertical perspective. But it will slice right into the, uh, the workpiece much like a knife and cut it off at some uh, length. And that's usually used when you have a long workpiece and you're finished doing the machining on it and you now just want to cut it off and then flip it over and do a facing cut on it to clean it up. So that's, uh, now you can see it has, a, has to be held in a specialized holder. There's no way to hold that directly in the stock tool post. And in this case I have it in a uh, holder for a quick change tool post.